Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking AI animated art effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to generate our artwork. Now I'm using Adobe Firefly. Now if you haven't signed up for this, please do. You'll have to request access to the beta and then once you're in, now you can start generating uh, images via text prompts. So this text prompt that I'm using here, I'm just searching for a modern house sitting on an island in a pond surrounded by mountains. I've made sure that my aspect ratio is 16 by 9 and I've played around with some of these settings. And you know, the cool thing about, you know, AI generation is that you can keep generating until you get the look that you want. Once you're happy with, you know, your artwork, just download it and then we'll take it into Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop and I've just opened up a new 1920 by 1080 pixel document. So this is going to be the size of my composition in After Effects. And then I'm just going to drag my image onto here. So now all I have to do is just make sure that it fits to the size of the canvas and then just press enter. Now there are a few things that I want, I want to remove, for example, like this down here. So what I can do is I can right click on this, rasterize that layer. And then all I have to do is just, you know, draw a box around the part that I want to remove. And then if you go to edit, content aware fill, um, you can have a look at the preview and you want to output to the current layer. Just press OK. Now, if there's anything else you want to, you know, get rid of, all you have to do is just highlight it and go to edit content aware fill and play around with some of the settings until you are happy with what you have. So the whole idea is to have a nice body of water that we can apply a ripple effect to. So I'm pretty happy with this. I only have to mask out maybe around here, which might be a little bit difficult, but we'll see how we go in After Effects. So just save this and export this and then uh, load it up into After Effects. So here we are in After Effects and we're just going to create a new composition, 1920 by 1080 pixels, 30 FPS, at a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. Just press OK. Once you have that, then what we need to do is we need to import our file. So I'm just going to right click and go import file. And then I'm going to drag that to my timeline. So now we can see that the uh, picture does not move and we're going to start to make that move. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new solid and I'm just going to call that map. So now once we've created our new solid called the map, what we're going to do is we're going to search for an effect called fractal noise and we're just going to change a few settings in here. We're going to go down to the transform, we're going to uncheck uniform scaling and we're going to play around with the scale height. We're going to bring it down to probably around about 13. Now you can also play around with the width as well if you like, but we'll check back to that a little bit later. The next thing that we need to do is we need to actually make it move. And if we move the evolution settings, you can see that the fractal noise will actually animate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold option and I'm going to hit that stopwatch and I'm going to write the value time times, let's say 200. Now, if that's too fast for you, you can always drop down that value. Or if that's too slow for you, you can always bring it up. So we can fine tune these settings a little bit later. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that map underneath our house layer. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and I'm going to call this mask. So I'm just going to click on that, just press enter, call it mask and I'm just going to put it on top of everything. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to search for an effect called displacement map. And what we're going to do is we're going to change that uh, displacement map layer to our map layer. And we're going to change the source to effects and masks. We are then going to change the horizontal and vertical displacement to luminance. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bump up these values here. So maybe something around about 145, you know, something like that. And you can also change the max vertical displacement as well. But the problem with doing that is that now you've got these black lines on the edge of your um, piece of art. So what we're going to do is we're going to click that button, wrap pixels around, and that will kind of mimic that. But because I've set the vertical displacement to zero, this one sits flush at the bottom. And I think that's looking pretty cool. It gives it that cool reflection kind of look. So now what we need to do is we need to draw a mask around this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the eye off that mask just so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to draw a rough mask. So 
just probably want to start maybe a bit up there or go all the way over there uh if i want to do any curves or anything like that i can just hold the mouse button down and this is what i was saying uh it's probably easier if you you know get rid of everything in here so it's just uh, a simple kind of mask okay cool so now once you have all of your mask uh, set up all you can do is turn the eye back on and now you can see we've added that to the actual artwork and that's looking pretty cool but we do have some errors that we want to fix up so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to press f for feather and we're just going to increase the feather so slightly maybe we'll change it to maybe something like 60 and then we'll check back and see what it looks like so you just want to hide any imperfections so you can see here where it's trying to you know get that little stump over there it's kind of displaying that in the displacement map but i mean that looks pretty good and it's not that much work that we've actually done in there so the next thing that we need to do to make it look a little bit better is we need to uh, add another effect which is called compound blur and what we're going to do is we're going to drag compound blur to the top and i'm just going to change the blur layer to the map and i'm going to change it to effects and masks and now you can see it's much softer so and if you always if you want to go back and change you know any of your points you can like you don't actually have to get it right on the edge um you can just move it around ever so slightly just so it kind of uh, gives that kind of illusion that it's actually moving so now i'm pretty happy with that and so now what i can do is i can just make it look a little bit better so i can play around with the blur layer so if you want to go for a bigger and deeper blur you can bring that up but i'm gonna probably probably leave it around about 18 or so but you can feel free to play around with that the next thing that we can do is we can add a curves layer to this so if i bring that to the top and if i you know play around with some of these settings now i can change that intensity of that water so now we've got a really cool look and it just kind of darkens those darker bits over there so i think that's looking pretty nice we've got a bit of movement happening there so now we can move on to the next stage so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to add an adjustment layer and we are going to search for an effect called cc snowfall and we're going to add snow to this composition now you can see what's happening here like it already looks pretty cool but i'm going to change a few things so i'm going to change the flakes to probably around about 57 700 maybe something like that so now we can see the flakes falling down probably going to increase the size to maybe like 3.6 just to bump that up i'm also going to change the i'll keep the variation at 25 i will change the wind i'll bring that up to maybe let's say 130 so it gives it some movement and i will also change the spread i'll bring that down to maybe about 12 and honestly you, you can put any settings in here and it will look pretty damn good so now we have some snow falling as well so once you're happy with your uh, snow effect you can also add a new adjustment layer and we can search for the effect called cc rainfall and again if you put this on now you've got snow and rain happening at the same time so we're just going to change a few of these settings so we're just going to drop down the size to maybe let's say about uh 4, 000, or the drops uh we're going to maybe increase the size to about four we're going to increase the speed to maybe let's say 1500 uh and we're going to change the wind to probably about you know 470 as well so it's kind of got that same angle as well and then you can play around with the opacity and things like that and the background reflection as well so i'm just going to increase the influence percentage a bit just so um, that it's not as intense and then i can also play around with some of the spread and the spread height as well and then once you preview that back you know um 
you can get whatever look you actually want to go for. So the final thing we're going to do is we're going to add some lightning in the background. So for this, I'm going to use an asset. So I'm just going to import the file into my After Effects. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it to my composition. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the blend mode to screen. And now if I preview that, you can see I've got all of that lightning over there. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it maybe over here and now it's going to be in that corner over there and that's looking pretty nice so the overall effect that we can do is we can add another new adjustment layer and we can add some more curves to this and we can really emphasize you know uh the darker bits over here and we can maybe even maybe even drop it down a little bit like that and the final thing that we're going to do to bring it all together is we're just going to add some noise and we're probably going to bump that up to somewhere around 10%. So now we've got some noise, we've got some rain, we've got some snow, and we also have some lightning in the background. Now you can obviously make the sky move as well if you want, but um, I'll leave that up to you guys. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this quick tutorial on how to use AI and how to create animations from AI generated images. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.